In this lesson, we're going to talk about static and dynamic equilibrium. So Fred is entering an art contest. As he hangs his painting, he remembers he's not allowed to have a painting that weighs more than 60 newtons. He doesn't have a scale, but he does have a portable force sensor that can measure the tension in each string, and it measures it to be 50 newtons. The strings hang at an angle of 30 degrees from the horizontal. Is his picture too heavy? To understand this, we're going to break the forces into components and look at what static equilibrium is. So static equilibrium, if you look at the words uh, involved, static means the object is not moving. That means it is at rest. So this painting is static. Equilibrium means the sum of all of the forces is zero. Newton's second law says the sum of all forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So in this case, an equilibrium case, the acceleration must be zero so that mass times acceleration is zero. Equilibrium happens when the forces are balanced. That means the sum of all the forces in each direction equals zero. So the basic characteristics of static equilibrium, it's an object that's at rest, it has no velocity, its acceleration is zero, and the forces are balanced so that the net force in either direction will be zero. When we talk about the sum of forces in each direction being zero, we have to break our forces into x components and y components. And we write it like this. Sigma means the sum of. So the sum of forces in the x direction equals the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Acceleration is, is a vector, and it has to be broken into an x component and a y component. And the sum of all those forces also equals zero, since the acceleration is zero. In the y direction, the same is true. The sum of all forces in the y direction equals the mass times the acceleration in the y direction, and that is equal to zero. So let's look at this problem. To solve static equilibrium problems, the first thing we're going to do is check any problem that involves forces. First, is the object in equilibrium, meaning is it at rest, which is static equilibrium, or at a constant velocity, which we'll talk about later. That's dynamic equilibrium. This case is at rest. So it's in static equilibrium. That means the sum of forces is zero. Next, we need to identify all the forces and draw a free body diagram. So for this painting, we have the force of tension going up and to the right, 30 degrees above the horizontal. We have the force of tension going up and to the left, 30 degrees above the horizontal. We also have to include the weight of the painting, so the force of gravity. Force of gravity goes down. That's what we're looking to find. Once we've identified all the forces, we need to look at them in only the x and y direction and solve the force, sum the forces and set them equal to zero. For this problem, since we're looking for the force of gravity on the painting, it's going to be helpful to look at the force of tension in the y direction only. We need to break it into x and y components because the 50 newtons is broken into part of it will be applied in the x direction and part in the y direction. So we're going to solve for this force in the y direction. And we're just going to use trigonometry. So we say sine of 30 is the force of tension in the y direction over 50 newtons, which gives us, when we rearrange the problem, solve, multiply both sides by 50 newtons, we get the force of tension in the y direction to be 25 newtons. Now the y component of this force of tension here is equal to the y component of this force of tension because they have the same angle and the same hypotenuse. So we now have two forces of tension that are 25 newtons up. So when we now we're going to take our forces and sum our forces in the y direction and set it equal to zero. So we have 25 newtons up plus 25 newtons up. That's the these are the two y forces above the painting and below the painting we have force of gravity and that points down so it's negative. All of those added together equals zero. So solving for fg we get the force of gravity is 50 newtons. That means his picture is not too heavy. It can be uh, up to 60 newtons. We could also have an object that's moving but not accelerating. This is called dynamic equilibrium. These objects travel at a constant velocity. The equations that we use for the forces are exactly the same. So we have the sum of forces in the x direction equals mass times acceleration in the x direction, and that is equal to zero for dynamic equilibrium. 
sum of forces in the y direction is the mass times acceleration in the y direction, and that is equal to zero for dynamic equilibrium. A special case of dynamic equilibrium is when an object reaches terminal velocity. That's an object that's falling and eventually reaches a point where it's not speeding up anymore. It's the highest velocity reached by an object traveling through the air. It will travel at a constant velocity and not accelerate. If you imagine Fred is jumped from an airplane and he's falling, he has the force of gravity pulling him down. He also has air resistance going up. When we reach terminal velocity, the force of gravity equals the air resistance or the drag force. So he's not has a zero acceleration and he is in dynamic equilibrium. He is moving though. This is not static equilibrium. So let's do a problem. Suppose Fred is parachuting. After he opens his parachute, he falls until he reaches terminal velocity. If the total weight of Fred in the parachute is 1,000 newtons, what is the force of air resistance? So first we're going to check if the object is in equilibrium. Is it at rest? No. Is it at a constant velocity? Yes, it's at dynamic equilibrium because he's in terminal velocity. Now we're going to identify all the forces and draw a free body diagram. So we have our force of gravity pulling him down and our force of drag pulling him up. Then we're going to set up our force equations for each component, force of x and force of y. We sum our forces in the y direction and set it equal to zero. We have force of drag going up minus force of gravity going down. Force of drag minus force of gravity, which we know is 1,000 newtons, is zero. And that gives us the answer that the drag force equals 1,000 newtons. You might have been able to do this one in your head because it's a pretty straightforward problem. So to summarize, in static equilibrium, the object is at rest, its velocity is zero, the acceleration is zero, the forces are balanced, and the net force is zero. In dynamic equilibrium, everything is the same except that the object is in motion. Its velocity is not zero, it's constant. But like static equilibrium, acceleration is zero, the forces are balanced, and the net force is zero.